give me pawn off one of your garbage mics? Why don't you just tighten these? I know, but it, lo it looks like it's all s s oh, like wait. bent. Oh, it is. It's fucked up. Then yeah, it's not mine. No, I promise that's yours. This is bullshit, dude. No, I <laughs> I know for a fact it's yours because I was going to no. use your cable. I separated them. I was going to use your cable to plug yours in. <laughs> this and this is, is bullshit, his cable, dude. which replaced your bullshit cable. That's fucking yours. Mine aren't broken. Not it makes sense that it's yours because it's been treated like shit. I bet my mother. I don't treat it like shit, dude. <laughs> Obviously, you do, dude. Wait, first of all, it. what's wrong with it? Look at you dropped it or something. I never dropped it. That's how I know it's Michael's. You're more prone to dropping it than I would be. I don't even you, you, use mine, Taylor. No, well, you mine stay in my closet. Well, that doesn't make sense then. That doesn't make sense then. You fucking Italian, dude. This thing is fucked and it's yours. This thing is fucked and it's yours <laughs> at the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Can we see our baby? Yeah, it's right over here. <laughs> so here's the deal. This thing is fucked and it's yours. <laughs> Imagine trying to go like, are you sure that one's ours? Can that one be ours? <laughs> Wait, I don't get it. What's fucked up about it? It looks fine. Look at it. Give it to him. Look at that. No, 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 no. no look at it. it. <laughs> it's just Jesus fucking you didn't God. say hold it, did you? said look at it. He said here. <laughs> Do you see? It's squeaky. This. Oh, yeah. I didn't do that. Mm -mm. I wasn't trying to get you to hold it. I was trying to get you to look at it. Instead, okay, you started okay, okay. measuring that one against okay, it. Okay, okay. But <clears throat> it's still, I mean, it's fixable probably. Sure. It still works. All right, all right, I all hope. All right. Yeah, it looks like it's working. Just the fact that you don't know wh what happened to it speaks volumes. Well, it pisses me off because I hate when this happens. You know, it's like you... You take around something. You let someone borrow something. If something goes wrong. Did like someone borrow it? borrowed it? Well, I'm just saying it's been used <laughs> by potentially not me, and now it's kind of mixed up. No it's one's mixed used up it in the but other you. Mics. No. no one's used it but you. You know what we're going to do right after this? We're going to write our names on all these. I'm going to scratch my name yep, into the one. Oh, Absolutely. that's fucking... I'm scratching my name into this one, no. dude. And this one's going to say T.A. Right on the end of I it, dude. I swear to God that these are mine. We'll never know. It's fine. You guys do music and stuff. You know, I know who, I'm just a little podcast guy. So. Whose podcast are we on right now, by the way? I'm just saying mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, what are we doing here? This is the Michael Garmony clear. podcast. I should have called it the talk show, but here's the thing. I can. It's mm -hmm. just this is episode number five or six. Yeah. And it feels weird to do a full pivot. It doesn't seem like a pivot. It just seems like you change the name on. Yeah, wherever. But the there's like are. there's like a I made a PNG with the logo that says podcast. It's probably pretty fixable. It's cool. Should I address the lawnmower? Sure. As soon as we decided we were ready to record this, a man started mowing the lawn out there. So yeah, that's what that is. It's okay, it'll probably stop at some point. It will. And you know what's annoying is most of the time when people mention that there's a, a they apologize for a sound. There it is. It's yep. done. Uh, I don't hear it like on podcasts. Yeah, I don't and they think go anyone's like, I don't know it. if you can hear that. I never can. So. It's pretty directional mics. Anyway, so this podcast is really free form. Most of the time when I do a podcast, it's supposed to be like helpful, like valuable information. <laughs> you know, <laughs> most, of, most of the time I do a podcast, it's supposed to be helpful. This one will not be. Well, it might, <laughs> it might know. It, we have to spend at least like a chunk. We don't have to do it now, but we have no. to spend at least a chunk so I can like edit it and put it out on platforms. That makes sense. Little clips. Of talking about mental health stuff. Love that. So we'll get there. But oh, are those? You got the tan, the Nike shorts? Yeah. How many did you get? I just got these ones and the black ones. Are they new? No, I don't think so. I thought about getting those ones. I like them. But they I feel fit. like they're too co close to the color of my skin. I no. mean, I know that they're not the same, but they're not the same. But when you wear things that are close to the color of your skin, it looks funny. I did think that they looked at when, I, when I'm not wearing a shirt and I just see myself in them, I'm like. It looks like a weird part of yeah, your body. Yeah, it does look like a weird part of my body yeah, a little bit. Saying. But I don't really mind it that much. No, it's fine. I like the color of them. I think them. they're cute. Are you going to get some now? Get something? Or are you going to get Can some Can you now? get us free shit? Yeah, almost. Really? We're working on a deal right now, yeah. With straight up Nike? Uh, No, because straight up Nike doesn't work with volleyball. Mm. That's so lame. They it's will. It's like certain Stupid. sports, like wrestling, like kind of some of the more mm -hmm. like. Show them what sports. you just showed us. It's kind of like Nike SB. 92,000 like separate... people watched volleyball. Watched volleyball. Yeah. Good call. We should probably start this off talking about volleyball, you think? <laughs> Kim? That is cool, though. Most attended women's sport of all time. The last time was somewhere in Spain for like a Champions League. Hold game. on. We're going to finish that point right now. I just don't want to forget to talk about my horny level versus your guys. 
your guys is. You want to talk about that first? No, no, no. We can let's continue with the volleyball thing. But I just realized that's a relevant topic to the podcast, and we can all talk. And about it's not it. relevant yes. to the fact that I just mentioned women's volleyball, and that maybe no, no, that's sparked. what triggered it. It is. <laughs> that's why I thought about it. Do you think volleyball chicks are hot? Yes, uh, some of them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. They have the potential. Like when you say volleyball girls, I think oh, they might be super hot. Yeah, I wonder what people's image of like a volleyball player. If I play professional volleyball compared to like, we all have an image of like, do you think basketball players are hot? Like that's an image or like, do you think wrestlers are hot? Here's what it is. I think it's equal. I think that when you bring up a male or female volleyball player, my initial mental image is hot. Both of them. It's hot for both of them. Mm. I think in reality, they're less hot than what sports do you think don't give you the mental image of hot golf? Same. Usually. And it partially is due to the outfit, I think. It's just not like a very hot outfit. Women's volleyball, they're like basically not wearing anything. Like what do you think are the top five like hottest baseball. sports? No, no, low key. You ask for women. Dudes? No, oh, yeah. for girls. Girls they think love, baseball players yeah. are so hot. They do, they love You know what I think butts. it is? They they don't have like they fit the cross section of all people because like basketball players and you, volleyball players, like freak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're mm-hmm. in the freak height. Um, and so some women might be intimidated by that, but like baseball players are hot and accessible. Yeah, baseball players are kind of like a, a reflection of the of America. Exactly, they just look like what everybody looks like, and like but hot and rich. And some of them are real gross looking, but that's any sport. Yeah, it's very. I feel like baseball players are very seedy, though. What do you mean seedy? They just look sketch. Just like it's. I feel like. I wonder what you think would be the most like fratty sport. Like when I think of baseball, I just think of like frat guy talk. Feels pretty uh, fratty. Yeah, a little more bit. so than other sports. Football feels pretty fratty too. For, uh, you're maybe you're right. Big yeah. time. Yeah, you're dude. Right. When I think of Johnny Manziel, so fratty. Who's Johnny Manziel? Exactly. Great question. Johnny Manziel was the. Oh, neither of you know. No, I know, but not like I'm. No, I'm the least sports guy here. He was like known for partying or something, right? No, and he got like kicked kinda. out of the... He was the... He was supposed to go. He wasn't the number one draft pick. But like he was basically a freak college football player who just came out of nowhere. I think he played for the varsity. No, that was that was in was that high school. I can't remember. Something. Anyway, um, he was just like amazing. Everybody watched him in college. He like took over the world. Like it wasn't, you have to, I'm not explaining this well. There's a documentary on Netflix now about him. But I remember the only reason I knew about him is because he was so famous as a college football player that like he was more famous than every pro athlete. He was like as famous How as have I never heard of like actors, rappers. That's pretty They nuts. all were like head crushers on him. And then what happened was he started, I don't want to ruin the documentary, but like he was pissed off that he was making so much money like hundreds of millions of dollars for college right colleges and he wasn't allowed to make money off his career like yeah, college uh well college sports people couldn't make money until recently playing college sports so right? i think he was kind of mm-hmm. a part of that so what he started doing was he That's started signing nice. they stumbled onto it because some guy was like hey will you sign all these jerseys for me and then his buddy johnny Mendel's buddy was like charge him like this much money or whatever and he's like okay so he's like actually i have a ton of shit in a hotel room will you come sign it and then he's like yeah how about like five grand or something like that and he was like all right so he's sitting there and then he goes to get more shit or something like that and his friend's like dude i think we're getting fucked i think he's gonna make like a hundred grand off of all this signed shit totally because that's how famous he was right Mm. so they turned it into a business and they were flying all over the country doing this and he was making so much money that he started getting into all these parties that's how he became friends with drake he's got like the ovo owl tattooed on him Anyway, full story is he got signed to the Browns and then did absolutely nothing just and just like that good fucked his it. career immediately. No, he explained that he was unhappy. He hated it. He kind of just like phoned it in on purpose because once he became he phoned a pro, what in playing for the Browns. Yeah, he just said, I don't. But he said he got super depressed. It wasn't like college and it wasn't like high school and he hated it. That's so sad. So he like tanked his career on purpose. The um, what does he do now? He plays in like a, it's I can't remember Canadian what the league's called. League no, it's like a fan owned league, fan owned league. It's American football, but it's not pro. Fan owned league. But he had like a he was like An had a huge drug league? problem. He was like suicidal. He was like had a whole bunch. Mm. That was like real heavy. I think a lot a lot of athletes, 
specifically. I know this is like more what your other podcast material is about, but I do, <laughs> when I do hear that, it's like, dude, the, I can't tell you how much I hear like depression associated with in athletes. sports. Yeah. So yeah. Much. I think it's common as fuck. I think it's ubiquitous throughout anything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's just humans. You guys know about Ben Simmons. Um, what about him? He like, ben oh yeah. Sim- he was like one of the, like, yes, most highly touted, like, like sought after NBA players for a while. And then he got hurt. I actually don't really necessarily know like what Dylan his deal told is. me about it. He like fully like he didn't get hurt. He yeah he might not have actually. Or maybe gotten he hurt. got hurt. He fucked up a like a play. It was like a layup or something. I can't remember what he did. The thing that he gets made fun of made fun of for all the time is like he was like a great like defensive player. He was like six ten. He was really tall. He was very athletic, but like he couldn't shoot for some reason. And so people would make these compilation videos of him like airballing shots. Yeah. And so it went to his head. And then, like, he had this mysterious, like, back problem that kept him out for a year. And then he was finally, like, his coaches were, like, cleared him to play and everything. And he's like, no, like, my back still hurts. Yeah. And he was, like, I think afraid he, I to think play he, again because he was afraid of what that or He had mental health issues. There's no way he didn't. He, yeah, it, sure, it finally but... came out later that he, like, ha- he was struggling with mental health-related stuff. And that's why he wasn't coming back. But it seemed very obvious that the reason that he wasn't coming back was because he was afraid of getting made fun of. Mm. Yeah, but it's probably. Is, but the thing is, if you're afraid of getting made fun of to the point that you signed a multi-million dollar contract and you're not coming back to play, right? That's you're not afraid of getting made fun of. You have a serious mental health disorder. Totally. Because you might be terrified of getting made fun of. You'll still push through. But like, it must have been to the point where he was like having. It's crazy to me to hear that when these athletes are getting paid like millions of dollars. That's enough to give me mental health issues right there. No, no, no. Fair enough. Fair enough. I just mean like sometimes I'm like, damn, dude. Like, wait, because, you know, like I'll say like a lot of athletes experience probably they're not their. This is pretty general. But like for those athletes who maybe have never experienced depression, when you get your first big injury, a lot of athletes, I think, start to struggle with like, oh, it's the first time your your job is taken away from you. And that starts to potentially like perpetuate thought about oh who am i outside of just being a basketball player or yeah, whatever, really. you know? uh-huh. i mean i had the same experience when i had a knee surgery so but i i hear that a lot you know you're saying wait but it's hard for you to believe no it's not hard for me to believe because i'm sure like most people who are very wealthy says money say money is not like the key to happiness and that seems pretty obvious i just mean like it feels like, and I'm sure everyone feels this way except for the person who's making millions of dollars and still feels depressed, but it like it feels like if you had that injury or if you felt depressed, at least you'd be like, ah, I'm out and can't work right now, but I made millions, so that should give you Guaranteed. some comfort. And it doesn't. I, think I have this great thing to go back to pretty soon when I get whenever I get healed. Or like, you know, in my position at least, it was like I had knee surgery, I lost a big contract, and I don't make millions of dollars playing as a volleyball right. player that's a big deal mm-hmm. but it's like fuck if you're a pro athlete i feel like if you're like an nba star and you're making millions of dollars and you have to miss a season like there's no doubt it's still hard and you could still be depressed and i'm, I'm not saying those things aren't valid i just mean like at least like you know you don't have to worry about like fuck i need to work because i need to be making but it, it has nothing to do with that that like <clears throat> the people who are prone to mental struggles like severe depression it has nothing to do with real world circumstances sometimes they can be the trigger but it's almost like it's like you're standing on a ledge and like the cliff is to your right and the ledge is like not solid rock it's like loose soil and something causes you to like lose your balance a little bit so like a life event and then that soil breaks and you start slipping downhill the life event isn't the reason that you're going all the way downhill and you're and you're like spun out but it triggered the episode and now you're just like stuck and so it has nothing to do with the injury it has nothing to do right. with losing a contract it has nothing to do with money it is a complete independent chemical state so all of those things could be fixed and you're still fucking depressed because yeah. and it's hard to like i intimately know that feeling of going oh something happened but like that's not even a problem anymore and i'm still like severely depressed and then it's just because it literally has nothing to do with real world circumstances it's just because some people are like, for lack of a better explanation, chemically prone to like spinning out or slipping out. You've kind of been through that a little bit. Spinning out? Well, like having something that happened that no longer was affecting you, but you still were mentally affected by it. 
Yeah, I think it's just because mine specifically was my heart that it's like now anytime I feel anything around or near it, mm-hmm. it's just like residual PTSD from right. it. Yeah, and that's kind of part of it is that when you slip out like that, when you when your emotional or mental state dips so extremely out of nowhere and you've never experienced that before, you instantly have PTSD. For sure. Because it's so scary and so out of your control that all you can do after that is like go, well, I didn't see that coming, so I guess it could happen again. The I guess it could thing is probably the thing that uh, like it's a huge keeps part. going. Because so something long. will happen that you've experienced before that like is like nothing. Right. But now you have context for like a terrifying experience. Well, also just so hearing like, about like, I don't know, every once in a while you'll hear a story about, was it, wasn't there a celebrity very recently who had a heart attack like really young? Yeah, always. Yeah, that makes it so much worse. I know. Dude, that's how every time I hear someone committed suicide, I spin out. Yeah. It's the same components, different things, different PTSD. Right. But like you go, oh, that could be me. Yeah, like absolutely. Even though, and what sucks, that's why I protect myself from the news is because you don't know any of the details. Mm -mm. You don't know what medications they were on. You don't know their family history. You don't know what their diet was like. You don't know anything. You don't know their mental state. And all of that could affect your heart. Totally. All of, you know, or your mental state. So it's like. Do you feel like you've made peace with that? Or do you feel like you avoid thinking about it and that's what gets you through not? I don't, I think you like having dealt with it for this long, like you literally can't avoid it because the proof of trying to avoid it in it not working is so apparent. So it's like, it's less like, to me, it it feels less now like scary and more annoying for the most part when I get it because I'm just like, fuck, like, okay, let's think about all the things that I did today. Let's think about what I ate. Let's think about how much exercise I had. Let's think about like what's going on in the next couple of hours that I could be stressed about. That's like making me feel like this. It's just like pinpointing it, realizing what's making me feel that way. And then just being like, cool, I know, but there isn't really anything I can do about it. It's kind of like you've been through it and been fine. You've had that thought yeah, and been fine so many times that now you have removed the possible, like in all likelihood, you're going to be fine. You know, you're not going to die or have a heart attack, but you still have to deal with the physical it's very, yeah, response very much so which is like part. fucking annoying yeah that's what'll happen to me sometimes is i'll like spin out or get triggered by something and like i know it's gonna go away because i've been back and forth so many times but i'm just pissed off that it's interrupting absolutely my day mine the one that i get the most annoyed by is like because my first like panic episode ever was in bed mm-hmm. the one that i'll get now is and it doesn't happen very often it happens like every couple of months or something but i'll be in bed, really tired, not feeling anxious at all. And I'll be like, it's literally when I'm like getting sucked into sleep, Mm -hmm. it'll just go, Mm -hmm. it'll just like my whole body will get hot, like immediately. Mm -hmm. And I'll just like start sweating and I feel my heart beating super fast. And I've gotten to the point now where like, I don't even get up. Like I I feel it happen and Mm -hmm. I just go, okay. You just like don't even have a reaction. (laughs) Just like. But that's progress. it, It is progress. What's crazy is it's just like, what do you like? Well, okay. In your case, you what had. What even is that? What, <laughs> well, I just mean like what, what, what do we do? Why do we have to deal with this? I thing mean, now? dude, I feel like mine makes so much more sense than all yours does. Yeah, yours, yours is a little more comforting because it's like you can point to the exact thing. Yeah, you can follow 100%. a trail of logic of like, oh, this is why I'm here. Yeah, you know why I have them, right, Taylor? Do you, can you do you feel comfortable talking Not about that. it? Not that. I'll talk about it. Oh, talk. Please. No problem. This Please. Is, this That's what this heroin. is about. Yeah, big time. Used to be a heroin act. So everyone knows that. But this isn't about that. <laughs> no, literally. <laughs> this is most of the people who watch this don't know that. So that's true. That's new information. You guys as well. know that. Sorry. You can just just take a moment and give all your quick background. Well, okay. We'll just do the quick drug history. When I was 21, 22 years old, maybe a little earlier. You and I uh, would record Juggalo rappers. Mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes they didn't have money to pay us, so they'd give us Vicodin. Mm-hmm. So we started taking a lot of Vicodin. Mm-hmm. That turned into a Norco's thing, which turned into a oxycodone thing, mm-hmm. which turned into a dependence, which uh, got expensive. And uh, the my drug dealer at the time was like, you should just switch to heroin. And I ignored it for so long, and then finally like started running out of money. So he was like, just snort this heroin. It'll be so much easier, and you'll save money. Mm-hmm. 
Did that for a little bit. Things got scary. Started pawning off shit in my house to be able to afford stuff. Had a girlfriend the whole time. She didn't know I was doing all this. So I was like, this is pretty bad. My life's probably pretty great outside of this. So is that rain? Whoa. Wait, is that rain or hail? I don't know. It's been over. I felt. You guys uh, just. Is that God? (laughs) Also, dude. (laughs) That's crazy. What's like the real difference between? Is this a synchronicity? It sounds. Happening? It know. sounds like heroin's like easily hideable. Then what do you mean? Well, you were in. She or your girlfriend at the time was yeah. living with you. Were you ever getting the nods? <laughs> That's one thing. I, I I know you're. Can we talk about Chain having that? Uh, we don't have to. Let's wait. wait what That's are the fair. nods? No, it's just like when you're really, like when you're this? really high. No, it's more like a. Let's just say we have known, yeah, we know, and it is we, a common like sign I, of heroin like addicts. Fell asleep they like, <laughs> they start. It's nodding exactly out. that. Remember no, what? It's literally, <laughs> this. This is what it looks like. Uh, this is going to trigger some people. If you have uh, triggering trauma with a heroin addict, or you were one, just don't look. Yeah. But it's literally this. They do the opiate face, which is this. Because your <laughs> your jaw gets. I've seen you do it. You, your Thank jaw God. gets so relaxed that it Thank just God. like opens, but your lips are so closed, and then you go like this. Yeah, yeah, 100%. and I've seen. I remember feeling that because I also dabbled a lot in Norco specifically and right. pain pill. I just loved that type of. Feeling. I guess we all three have that in common. It's really great. And I used to get like I'd be like on my computer or something, and it would just kind of like everything would just like it's like I didn't want to focus on anything. It yeah. just felt like kind of blurred. It's like it's like a like someone just kind of like playing with the power button on you just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <kinda> like, <laughs> but it's like one of those like joysticky ones. Yeah, big time. Like it can do It's not just a button it. where it's like on and off. It's yeah. like depending on how hard you it's press like, on dude, it. Dude, exactly. we can't insert that insert that video of me falling asleep with crutches. We probably can actually. Should, I have the video. I have that video of him okay, standing on his crutches going Was that you on the killers? It was. Yeah. When he got that, his surgery. When I surgery. And he was, he was standing up on his crutches. And we were about to leave somewhere. And I see him fall asleep. And I'm like, Taylor! <laughs> <laughs> and he like kind of shakes it off a little bit. <laughs> it was so good. Oh, oh my God. That's that was funny. incredible. Uh, but you you had access. that You were supposed to be on painkillers at that moment. Yeah. yeah so which is but, you, but you've also yeah, done painkillers recreationally, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a thing. I did the morphine patches, too. I never did that. Like 72 hours. Whoa. <laughs> they pretty intense. Okay, That's wait, crazy. hold on. It doesn't on. matter. I mean, we don't need I forget that people are listening and yeah. we create a narrative. Yeah, and, and if we, we don't finish it, it's annoying. It. That's so, probably true. So you keep going. Uh, okay, so I en- ended up going to rehab. You didn't get the nods. Didn't. Yeah, I didn't really get the nods. That's how your ex didn't know. Yeah, she did not know. But uh, I got to a point where I just like realized my life would be so much better if I could just get through the withdrawals and go back to being a human being again. Went to rehab, did that. Uh, and then I was sober for like a while, didn't drink, didn't do anything. Luckily my relationship with alcohol has never been like, I really enjoyed it that much in the first place. So I've Mm. kind of been able to like periodically like drink for fun or something. And like, I really don't enjoy. Yeah. I've, I've almost never seen you wasted. Very rare times. Yeah. I've seen you super drunk one time Mm -hmm. and that was before that. It was before that whole drug phase. Yes. So I feel like that's you've never been like, like a drinker pills and that kind of stuff like you, you don't really get a hangover which is why I think it makes it a lot more dangerous you know yeah for sure I mean no, you, you don't get a hangover you just get <laughs> you get a life hangover you get literally the worst withdrawals I mean when you tr- when, when you, you decide all to the time. stop yeah the yeah, withdrawals yeah, sure. are terrible but like there's the you also get that from alcohol I mean yeah, yeah. But I just mean like alcohol gives you a little like taste of it every no, time no. you get hammered and wake up the next yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, that's why that's like alcohol's gift. Right, we're is not that about you get hung over immediately. Right, sure. Totally. But you also get the long term uh, hangover if you drink for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's doubt. so scary. I'm for guessing. Sure. Actually, I don't know because I've never been addicted to alcohol for that long. I've never known anyone who's had alcohol withdrawals. Me either. So but maybe the, I'm talking. They're apparently really dangerous because those in benzos are the only ones that you can die from the withdrawals right. of. Mm. Right, you can have seizures. That's what we've heard. Um, but I, then I was I was sober for a while, and then me and uh and a buddy Coley who passed away a, a few years ago, um, we would uh, R.I.P. Kind of sounds like humorous now because people say it like that. I know people say, like it's so used. So I just feel like bad saying RIP, but oh, I like, mean it sincerely. Like when someone yeah, drops a bag of chips on the ground like, or something. R- like. <laughs> that's so horrible. Damn, RIP. <laughs> oh, like, that was a good example. Pretty, that's pretty sad. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, but literally. Yeah, yeah, okay. for sure. But anyway. he actually died. Um, 
and him and I. Wait, sorry. This is so stupid. <laughs> I have to. I'm so that's, sorry, dude. That's fine. Sometimes when I say like I'm on the phone with someone and I say like, all right, peace. Oh, it I sounds feel like, like I say R.I.P. Like yeah. R.I.P. Sure. I, I hear right, you say that when I think R.I.P. Of it every to this time, phone dude. call. Oh, yeah, that's like <laughs> dude, pretty, if you said that every time you got off the phone. <laughs> All right, R.I.P. Right, R.I.P. to the phone R. R. call. R. Wow, actually, is really dark. It's kind of in a way too. Really okay. Anyway, all right. I'm sorry. We, Coley and we're I were sorry. Coley and I were hanging out uh, a bunch, and we would. <laughs> he like reintroduced me to cocaine, which I'd never really liked that much in the first place. It never really did anything for me, but he got really good cocaine mm-hmm. and we would just this is so lame we would do cocaine and just stay up literally just the two of us stay up to like seven or eight in the morning just showing each other songs like not songs nah, we wrote that's what, that's what you like, do with drugs i know but we would just that's like what you do is crazy you just like, Dude, like you ever heard this Beatles song yeah. and then we'd listen to it and i'd be like I just feel so good Holy fuck this is so good <laughs> God, dude. It's incredible. Dude, this is why i don't like coke yeah it's, it's because it makes you do weird shit like that that's really so weird cringy shit. it's so cringy mm. oh my god and like given i would probably like I'd probably have fun just sitting down and doing that with a friend now, but not, not like till seven dude, in the not morning. till seven in the morning and like not like geeking over it too. Like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Fucking God, this yeah. Most of those drugs are best spent at a club or somewhere where there's loud Minimize music yeah, where, you, where you yeah. can dance and yeah, you don't yeah, need to talk. Because I'm the dancing. same. Like we used to, we used to do that shit and just fucking like play N64 until like four in the morning. Dude, absolutely. And then like oh try to gosh. chise a girl at like two or three in the morning. You know, <laughs> chise. <laughs> I don't think chives? I've said that word in years. I felt what is good. Chives? Yeah, I haven't said that word in a long time. I've heard you say it, but what uh, is yeah, it? Yeah, chives. I don't know. It's like, uh, you know. Hey, hey. Sorry, I was checking the audio. Yeah. Uh, Haul out your girl, dude. I remember one time I did ecstasy, and I was playing cards with my friend, and I play baseball. I was about to say something, and I was like, I don't know if I've ever told anyone this, and it was dark in the room, and as soon I was, this was in high school. And he was like, it's okay, man. You can tell me. Like, you can tell me anything. And as soon as he said that, it took me out of the moment. And I was like, oh, my God, we're on drugs so hard right now. <laughs> yeah. Because he, there was such a stereotypical, like, the way he said it. It was almost like he started sweating when he said it. Yeah. He was like, it's okay, man. You can tell me anything. And I was just oh, like, dude. I liked it, though. That's when he said it, I was oh like, I want to tell you everything tonight. That's so real. Oh but, like, God. it was just one of those moments where I was like, oh, we're on drugs. Super yeah. real. That's okay, sorry. Rough. Sorry, 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 sorry. Go. We were showing each other songs. So we were showing each other. Yeah, so we, we were doing that a lot. But uh, I, I didn't like love it, so I didn't do it that much. But one time we ordered two little baggies and I was like, hey, my roommate, we were living together at the time, my roommate's going to be gone for like a little bit of time. What if I just brought one of these bags home, did a bunch of it, and then just stayed up and made music all night? And so I tried to do it, that. In your defense, that sounds like a fantastic. I know idea. it sounds dope. You just stay it up all like night, such <laughs> by good... yourself on coke, making beats. Well, because Nothing it's just an extreme like version of like BPMs. when I have a free day yeah. and I wake up early, I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna drink coffee all day. And exactly, make music. and just make music, it's and it's gonna the, be so sick. I'm different. gonna be so locked in, yeah, and everything's gonna sound in. so fucking good. It's yeah, gonna yeah. rip. Uh-huh. So it's it, I did that for a little bit, and then I did too much, and then I remember go like. Oh man, I feel it now. It's crazy. Yeah, I, that, this I, is why I didn't want to make no, no, you talk no, no, about no, it. This is, this is good. Fine. It's no, good. This is good. I remember going on a, a walk because I was like, man, I have like so, so much energy. Like I need to, like I need to do something with this. And I went on a walk, and I walked for like two, three hours, and I wasn't really getting tired, and like my heart just kept beating faster and faster and faster. And I remember at one point being like, I can't, I can't breathe. <laughs> like this is so insane. And then like, okay, well, I need to lay down or something like that and try to relax. And I remember you going to music. Yeah, or like a podcast or something like that. Mm-hmm. This is also why I have a crazy association with association with listening to podcasts. They like stress me out a lot. Oh, because I didn't know that. I'm, I'm no, just realizing this right time. now. Exactly. Oh, that's crazy. That makes sense. And so I go home and I'm laying down and I'm like, I'm I'm having a heart attack. Mm-hmm. Like right now. Mm-hmm. And I mean, still to this day, and it probably didn't, it's probably not true. I still feel like I had one, but I probably didn't. But had you ever had a panic attack before that? No. So you it's hard to tell if you really were. Yeah. I, I mean, I definitely was full on having a panic attack. I mean, if you ever wanted to know, I'm pretty sure. Sh- well, actually, I have no idea why I was going to say this so confidently. Yeah. But if you have a heart attack, I think it can leave damage. Possibly. That they can see. Right. If you get like a scan. Might be worth knowing at some point. If you point. ever want to be fucking just justified. Yeah. Or it, might make, it might freak me out more. But maybe mm-hmm. there's some healing to be done there, too. Anyway. Uh, regardless... That I, I I remember laying in my bed and then physically like 
it kind of like cruxing and me like seeing red mm-hmm. and being like, this is really bad. I like I don't know what to do. You saw red. Yeah, like 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 my vision Went got red. red. And I remember being like, "This is really bad," and like I need to go to the hospital. But for some reason, like I just couldn't allow myself to call the ambulance because I because because calling the ambulance meant I was committing to something is actually happening. Mm. Like if I call the ambulance, then like this is real. Oh, I kind of see. And what like you're and so even on top of that too, I was because like, I remember this this feeling lasted for like days afterwards. Where like you were gone. So it was just me, and it was raining. It was so shitty. Was this here in like in Torrance? I can't. Yeah, it was in Torrance. If you called me that time, or if it called me, if you called me when it came back, one of the times. I remember calling you very soon after it, though, and Um, you just being like, "I think you're having a panic attack. You need to like just relax." And finally, after like four days of it really not getting better at all, I was in the shower. I was taking a really hot shower, which. I don't know if it is for if this is the same for anyone else with anxiety, but hot showers are horrible for anxiety for some reason. Just like it speeds up my heart rate super fast. It just like But because of that time, or you think it just always has been that way for you? No, because of that time. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. okay. That's what I'm saying. Maybe not everyone else feels this yeah. way with anxiety, but like I have a very specific memory attached to Feeling like I was gonna have a heart attack in the shower and being like, "This is I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to the hospital." And so mm-hmm. I put my jacket on and I walked to the hospital. And I was like, "If it gets bad on the way, I'll call an Uber." Right. But like, I feel like if I walk there, then it's like a compromise. Like I'm not admitting fuck, that it's fully walking. bad. Was this at nighttime? No, it was like in the middle of the day. Oh. It was fully raining, and I walked all the way there, and they're like, "You just have you're having a panic attack." Right they told now. you that? Yeah. Wait, why did I not remember this? Yeah, like they did blood work. What did hospital did you go to? Uh, the Kaiser. Like, oh, the one that was just down the street? Yeah, the one that was like right next to where the burrito place, or not that the burrito place. Yeah, the truck. The taco truck. We oh, yeah, because we had like two Kaisers, like pretty equally distant. What did that, feel? Oh, what yeah, did that feel like when a doctor is like, there's nothing wrong with you? I'm like, you didn't do enough tests. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't feel how I feel right now. Like, you're wrong. But the crazy thing was, there was like these crazy waves of... Like me being all the way there and then being really embarrassed and it kind of going away Mm. a little bit like, oh, fuck, like maybe this isn't not having a heart attack (laughs) for four days. Yeah. Well, didn't Sasha tell you literally that wasn't that an anecdote she told you on tour that made you feel better? What was the anecdote? She was like, you can't have a heart attack. for Yeah, yeah, that actually helped a lot, too. She's like, or she's like, you can't have a heart attack for an hour. She's like, you can't like we see similar stuff like that. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm a professional volleyball player, so I'm an athlete. I've been doing this for like 15 years. And I find it really interesting when like if you have an injury and you go get an MRI and you re- you think something's fucked up or something's torn and it's not. It's like the pain goes away f- so much faster. Because yeah, so much of it is psychosomatic. Because you're like, oh, shit, it's just like a lot of it's in my head and it dissipates, you know? Totally. Wait, they tell you that not, that you don't? Like, yeah, if like, you know, I don't know, you like slip or something, like you slip on like a wet spot on the floor or something and you think you've like ripped your groin, let's say, this is an example. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you go get an MRI or whatever and you get it looked at and the doctor's like, <clears throat> No, the ligaments are just a little stretched, but like, no, there's no problem. Like, there's there's no tear. You should be good You've to go. You've had this experience? I've had this experience myself. The pain just went away? No, it's not like the pain just goes away, but your association to the pain, like the narrative that you give the pain all of a sudden changes, and that like physiologically, I think, in some way. Yeah, I could like, see that. <clears throat> like, if you think, like if you have pain and you think something's broken, it's going to feel a lot more. Oh, actually, I've been through that with sleep where, because I did this, uh, sleep program that was all based on like mental stuff. Uh, and she was talking about like the, f- one of the first steps in the program was kind of reeducating you. So like she'd be like, most of us insomniacs end up somewhere or another researching the worst possible scenarios about what's going to happen because we're not yeah. sleeping. And she's like, it's all bullshit. She's like, all of these are anecdotal studies. You're not guaranteed to get Alzheimer's. You're not going to die of a heart attack. You're not going to like all this shit. She's like, you're fine. Humans have evolved to not sleep f- f- since our existence. Like, it's great that people are sleeping these days, but like, um, anyway, she reeducates you. And so I remember prior oh, to that. so surprising to when me. I, what? That she said that people have been not sleeping for like forever. That would super surprise me. No, I mean, it's, she cited all these studies. She's like, the ones that tell you that people are like sleeping less than we ever have evolutionarily are all, she, she basically just 
talks about how there is an industry built around insomniacs. Yeah, and I don't know anything, and you're totally right, but that's she, surprising to she me. She is not a bullshitter. She had insomnia for like 40 plus years since she was a little girl. She's had like worse than me. Damn. And and I talked to her on the phone. She's amazing. One of the most brilliant people I've ever met. She's so sweet. Oh, uh, Beth Kendall. Yeah, you should look her up. It's sleep, uh, mind, body, sleep, I think is what it's called. Anyway, she... Um, she re-educates you because she's like, what you do is you program yourself to be an insomniac. You, ca- you confirm all of your worst fears by researching all this shit that tells you how p- important sleep is. And there's no doubt that it's important and your right. health will be better if you sleep. But she's like, they, all these studies make you look at insomnia through the lens of you're going to have all of these diseases. You're going to die young right. you're like, if you don't sleep. And she's like... There are not there are not studies and articles being published because it's not benefiting any industry to tell you how many people have been sleep deprived their whole lives and never got a terminal illness, lived to be a hundred, like whatever. Mm. She's like we and there are tons of professors who have studied this, um, who say that like we've been having insomnia since we existed. Like humans, they are, they're saying that they would argue that. Uh, so it's like we're built for what? stress. Like we've always been stressed. Like totally. they say that we're not that we're more stressed now because of uh, industry and technology and shit. Maybe the stress is more complicated, but like it's different for sure. I I think I mean, dude, thinking about cavemen. Yeah, she, like he was saying, <laughs> he's like, all oh, this is bullshit. We've been trying not to get eaten. If for I centuries. go to sleep, a rhinoceros will kill my entire family. Or you'd have to sleep. If we go to sleep, to, we yeah. just sleep. Yeah, you'd for have the to most sleep part, so much lighter because you'd be. Thinking or like you're, you'd have to have that sense like totally ready and available for if that time came, you know. My so my full point was that when she said that, on how did the, they sleep back then? Yeah, dude? straight up. It's a but like, oh my God. Like how on the days that I would have terrible sleep, I used to feel like I could feel terminal illness in me growing, and my cells dying, and my brain turning to mush. Like it literally felt like I was becoming, I was dying. Totally. I was, I was like getting Alzheimer's and now when I don't sleep, I don't like it changes the sensation. Like I'm exhausted, but I don't feel like I'm fucking dying. Do you ever see the, just like when you get a skin, they tell you like you're, it's not injured. It changes the relationship of the pain is what I'm saying. Mm. Is that, was that your point? I was just making a long ass <laughs> parallel. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, did you ever see the episode of it's always sunny in Philadelphia, the flowers for Charlie one where they like, do, or they, they're like doing an experiment and they give Charlie this pill and it thinks he it makes him think that he's becoming a genius, and so he like all of these things in his life change. Wait, this seems really, uh, dude. It's it's really good. But he's not. He's still just as no. He's just like an was. absolute. It, the best part is like he thinks he learned how to speak Mandarin. <laughs> he's speaking gibberish. He's right? like every, like everything he said was absolute gibberish. <laughs> but like he has this, he has this like one of the guys in the study was like this this Asian dude, and he was like with him, and he was like. uh he thought he was his translator or something like that, but like it was the guy was literally just taking notes on how crazy Charlie was. He's was like, he's like, he started calling him his assistant, like his lab assistant at one point. He like thinks he, he like fully, but like that's I, I I real like equated a little bit to just like the more you confirm something, yeah. Like I mean, this is so obvious, but like the more you confirm shit, the more you believe it. I guess that's the same. Or the more you believe it, yeah, yeah. The more it becomes real. The more you Wikipedia everything that could possibly go wrong, the more you allow yourself to believe that all those things could be going wrong in the moment. Yeah, where and then you, you feel worse. Is where you go, dude. It's, yeah, it's the fantastic. best <sighs> advice. Actually, this is full circle because this is what I talk about in every single fucking episode. Is that whatever you, f- I think that most things in life are as good as they are bad. Right. And what really is the crucial thing is your ability to focus on one or the other. Yeah, because that's what your life will be. And I definitely empathize with that feeling impossible sometimes. Yeah, I because think because that that's what's so ironic is like I think solutions it sounds like magic. to so many things are actually so simple. It's just perspective change. Surrender, dude. And I say that constantly. Surrender. I've said it like Surrender eight times. Now, dude. Absolutely. It seems so simple and stupid and trite, but it's that's why it's so powerful. It's just you literally have to believe it, but it's hard to believe sometimes. Do we think that also just because I, I want to get this tattooed at some point because it was like it's so good and see but the, the quote is it wherever you look that's where you'll go or wherever you look that's where you go I, I would like just do where you look better. is where you go 
Where you look is where you go. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Good. Maybe easier because I was like, that makes sense. You're right? gonna do it. You're gonna do it in a where way. you look is where you go, big time. Or yeah. maybe just where you look, where you go. <laughs> Should we all get big time? Should What's we all get big time and then hate it? Hate I'll it? I'll get big time. In like ten years, let's all go get big time. Absolutely. In fact, I have a hat that says big time. That's the perfect font to get okay. it. We could just like I do big time. All right. Yeah, big time is pretty dope. Um. Oh yeah, what were we talking about? That was like on topic. We were getting to we were finishing my thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But like that's pretty much done anyways. Like Yeah, but that just explains your psychosomatic. It gives its book. context about the anxiety that you Yeah, it's like all now. of my all of my anxieties are around like how my heart feels. Well, it's also I think experience. the part that was so interesting to me in hearing you say that that I thought was relatable is like you're in your own head, not sharing with anyone, having your own experience. And because it's just you talking to yourself, you start to go fucking w- the worst case scenario. Big time. And the second you have someone who has a badge who's like, you're actually fine, you start to settle down. Yeah. Or you feel stupid or silly. Totally. But I think that's an important like thing to talk about is how we need each other. And I think so many of us go through these, like have these emotions or feelings. I know I have, I'm sure everyone in this room has Uh where you think that you're the only person who's, or no one could experience it. Like how I'm experiencing it right now. It's so unique to me. And while it is, it's also the solution. Isn't that you just do all the work. Like you need someone. I think it's really important to be able to be vulnerable in those moments where it's the hardest to be as a solution to like, you know, for people listening who are like, struggling and feel like their problems are unique and you know i think everyone has their own unique issues you know it's that's what i'm for president i think it's like a balance it's like sometimes you uh some some it's important to develop the skill of being able to tell yourself it's okay but like sometimes it's just like you just need to be told it's gonna be okay by someone that like has some kind of i think that and we've talked about this before too it's like you know that talking about it is good, but I'll go back to saying it out loud makes it real. For at least for me, I feel like yeah, yeah, yeah. When, no, I'm, no, no. when I when I feel like I'm anxious about something, I'm like, I know nothing's wrong. Or I mean, obviously, yes. not something fatal is wrong. But I'll be like, okay, I can deal with this. I'm fine right now. Maybe I'm freaking out a little bit, but the second that I go, dude, I'm actually kind of like panicking right now. Yeah, a little bit. Like, I feel like it validates. It like stokes the little yeah i wonder like, i yeah, never I am brave enough to experiment bitch, like in the moment and go like all right i'm gonna say it out loud to see if it makes it worse right but that's why like i uh i uh, how do i tell the story without hurting anyone's feelings um okay so i've told someone that like hey i was kind of panicking in that moment and they're like why didn't you fucking tell me and i was like well right. because like if I tell you, it validates that I need help. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? It val- it makes me, it's, it validates that it's so bad that I need someone to help me. And right. I'd rather just get through it in the moment and then get over it and go like, okay. Totally. It wasn't, I got, I can handle it. Cause like, if I tell you, it's almost like signaling to my body and my brain that like you need someone else to fix it. But if I just You're get through it on my own, this. I'm yeah. tell I'm like reinforcing the thought that I can handle this. Totally. Wait, so which one is more productive then? I think, uh, is, it depends ta- is on being how vulnerable and talking about it better There's, or is it better to no, fucking both. both it's if you can handle it on your own that's healthy i think uh if well you need to know how to handle it on your own no 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 yeah 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 but i'm saying if the situation if the context of that you're having the anxiety in needs an explanation like let's say you're giving a fucking speech and you start freaking out and you can't talk I'm probably going to like tell people like, oh, I'm just having anxiety right Big now time. or something or just whatever. If it's like coming off weird or affecting the scenario, you're just like, I'm just having anxiety. Totally. But like if it's like, oh, my God, can you pull me out of this? Right. Like, mm, I think that's OK to do if you absolutely need it. Right. But keep pushing it to the point where you don't. Yeah. I mean, not to keep relating everything to like being an athlete, but I see it a lot no, also in like in sports. Like, for example, I play with the national team and like with Team USA and some guys this summer got their first chance to start like first chance to showcase on a world stage Mm -hmm. and i remember like i don't want to name any players but this one player was like clearly nervous and we were like standing everyone stands in a line and everyone does like a 
saluting the flag and they play the national anthem and that mm-hmm. kind of shit. And I remember looking at him like, I was like, dude, you're right. He's like, dude, I'm so fucking nervous. And just being like, fucking me too, dog. Uh-huh. Like, I, I am too, you know, uh-huh. like, let's fucking go. I'm nervous too. Yeah. Like there was something in that, that after the game, he came up to me and was like, dude, that was insanely helpful. I was so nervous. And just hearing that, like a guy who's been doing this huge. for a while was also like, huge. also you know, can get nervous huge. sometimes yeah. was mm-hmm. huge. Yeah. You know, I think that stuff is like so valuable because at least in athletic community, it's like, don't be a bitch. So much of the narrative is like, yeah, you totally. don't want to admit that. You wouldn't want to say to a coach like, hey, I'm really nervous. Yeah. You would never want to do that. But I think there's so much value in doing that. Yeah, I would think that the best coaches <clears throat> would encourage you not to be a bitch, but to like, if you're struggling, ask for help. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I just, and I, like I, they would I guess have my the skill of like, helping I you. I think a lot of that is very socially conditioned. I also majored in sociology, so, you know, I, I like mm. to take the social look on things. But I think a lot That's of that true. is conditioning. And I think it's also changing in, like, a really good way. Yeah, I And, agree. like, everything, it's a balance of, like, you know, yeah, you don't need to have, like, a little feeling of, like, maybe you're anxious and blow it up and make it this big thing. But I think a lot of times saying it out loud, whether it's to yourself or to other people, a lot of times I think it helps it dissipate and disappear. Just yeah. putting it out there, you know? Yeah, I think it For really... For yourself to stop it's thinking personal. about... You just got to try. You're not, it's not going to kill you if you make the wrong decision in that moment. You just got to try shit out. Sometimes it helps to put it out there, and sometimes it helps to just get through it on your own. And it's really hard to do that in a space where you feel like you shouldn't. Right. And I think it's on everyone to create an expectation of we're all here to help each other. Totally. If you, you should feel comfortable to say that you're you're struggling. Like, have you ever said that in like a session with like, could you ever imagine that in like the music community, you know? I mean, I've had that in a session. I don't think I've ever, I mean, it's, it's tough because especially when I would get really panicky, it was a little earlier on in my doing all this. And I was still pretty new to getting panic attacks anyway. So it was like, wow, I like, I, I have this thing that's happening that I like don't really know how to deal with really well. And I'm going to like pretty much every day, like going to sit in a room with strangers where it's like going to be really quiet. Yeah. Like, it's like we're going to be very intimate and like I don't know them very well. So I feel weird just being like, hey, like I actually think I'm going to die right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you guys ever feel like that? I actually <laughs> had that recently. Really? In a session with our friend who I'm not going to name, but uh, he was like, he was on fucking, he was taking the, what are the little nicotine pouches? Zins? Yeah, he's on a Zin. He was eating dark chocolate. Mm. He's drink. I gave him coffee. Oh my God. And he smoked weed. And he was like so wound up that he like kept making me, he was like, can you make sure the front door's locked? <laughs> and then oh wouldn't no. let me close the, I mean, he was like still like kind of pleasant. And he was like, can you not shut the studio door? And I was like, yeah, yeah, for sure. It's all good. And then he kept trying to push through and like credit to him. Like we wrote half a song, but right. then he was like, yeah, I got to go. Like I'm having a panic attack. And I was like, right. oh buddy. I was like, it's all good. Wow. So that's, he left. Actually, that's actually huge. Yeah. Well, it's. I mean, I, I'll tell you who it is off camera. I think I have an idea of who it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he uh, is, so we have a relationship. Yeah. I'm glad great. he felt comfortable. Yeah, it's never, I've never gotten to that point before, but I've also like. But it, he might not have been as bad as we get. Right. It might have been bad, but he might also just not. I don't know. It's like a combination of like maybe he wasn't embarrassed. He was just like, yeah, I'm like just like having crazy anxiety. I don't want to do this. <laughs> Sorry. What? It's, it's like I'm thinking about the future, like the distant future. We're gonna be able to at some point, like when someone goes, like, "How do you feel?" Just be able to go like this. <laughs> yeah. And no. You'll switch really quick, and it'll be like, "Oh my god!" And it'll just kill yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my <God>. <laughs> oh my god, this is so it? bad. Exactly. Like I always feel like if that technology existed right now, and like if someone was like, "Hey, are you doing okay?" I'll be like, and then we'll switch for a second. I'll be like, "Oh my god." That's fucked up. Yeah. You feel like that all the time? <laughs> That's, That's how insane. I think. I know. That's what I feel it's like. so crazy. Uh, but beyond that, I think one day there's not going to be diff- any difference between you or I. Well, it's just we're all just one uh, universal consciousness. Uh, we'll be like... <laughs> like, you know how there are like countries? Yeah. yeah. That Dude, would, I already like this so much better than what I was going to say. That'll be a consciousness. <laughs> yes. And then there'll be a global consciousness that will interact with other global consciousness. Right. And then there'll be a universal consciousness that'll work 
or ga- galactic consciousness yeah. interact with other. Do you know what I'm saying? Until we're all one, it'll be like a and that's God. So beyond it'll, words, yeah, we way. all just are one. It's like There's the no cloud. separation. It's like when people kind of yeah. It's like when people have uh, psychedelic experiences and they say like there was no difference between there was no I right. I was part of everything. We are all in, in like a joyous way. It's an enlightenment thing. There was, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, there was no separation between myself. In fact, here's an interesting anecdote. I was listening to that book by that guy, Michael Pollan. Something about psychedelics. It's the sickest sounding name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Pollan. <laughs> you just took your first name and then like what, what bees. Exactly. Uh, and he talked to, I think a guy who was a programmer who was kind of like uh, either agnostic or atheist prior to doing acid. And then he did acid and had a psychedelic. Oh, my God. What is it? Get it out. It's not good. Just do it. I was listening to this guy on Michael podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like you are making it up. And you can't it's, not, of anything. it's not. <laughs> <laughs> the book was called Michael Psychedelics. Yeah. Great. Sorry, was, I didn't, okay. I didn't want anyway, to <laughs> Michael Pollan asked him what because he was like, I felt that. God damn it, dude. Michael Pollan. It's not that funny. I'm going to look him up. Not, no, I think it's just specifically face. because there's a really big writer named Michael Pollock. And I keep thinking that you're saying his name when you say Michael Pollan. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Sorry. Can no, I make no, my point? Yeah, yeah, with the book. Right? What are you talking about? Mycadelics. <laughs> <laughs> you just <say> Mycadelics. <laughs> That's great. Anyway, the guy had us, uh, he was convicted in his belief of God and spirituality after the psychedelic experience. And Michael Pollan said, why don't you just chalk it? What's stopping you from just chalking it up to it was a hallucination? Like, you know what I'm saying? And the guy said, because in order for me to doubt my experience, I would have to experience myself as an I because the only thing I can doubt is I, is the self, the ego. If you are part of everything, there's right. no doubt. Was this ever your experience? I'm Hold on. So he said, I, I don't know. doubt it. I've never it. done mushrooms. I have, but not like, I didn't go that deep. He, so anyway, he, that uh, was an interesting anecdote to me because I was like, oh, that kind of makes sense. He said that the doubt dissolves because only you can have doubt in something else. But if you are everything. Then it doesn't matter. There's no such thing as doubt. No, that's incredible. You're, I love that. you're everything. Right. And so you you are in the that, yeah. You know, Being like, able okay. to tap into that would be the ultimate anxiety killer. That would be so dope. Yeah, just like pure love and joy. Yeah. Fantastic. Absolutely. We are, we are a unit yeah. on earth. There's just we. Yes. That's why the Jamaicans, sorry, not Jamaicans. The Rastafarians yes. say I so much, like uh, praise I or love I, I and I. Right. Is because they're saying like, I think it's like, there's no difference between God. Yeah, we're the same. Like I is I. That's crazy. And I and I. I don't know. Anyway. I like that. I guess so. I like that is a big consciousness. That metaphor is so much better than what my metaphor was going to be. What was yours? Did you ever see that movie Jeepers Creepers? Yeah, remember when you, they go down and wash it together? I remember when they go down into that guy's cave? Oh no! Don't <laughs> stop! Ew. Can I just say it? Don't bring it disturbing in. Oh, sorry. All right, go ahead. <laughs> no, <it's> just, <laughs> they go down into that guy's cave and like the well thing is just a bunch of bodies just sewn together. <laughs> That's what <laughs> the walls. Yeah, the walls are just yeah. bodies. When <laughs> you said we, well, how did you say it originally? Like at some point we will just be like one. one, one. <laughs> <laughs> It's so dark. It's that's what it looks God, like. Dude. dude, oh my gosh. That's so insane. Bleh. I had a crazy dream a couple nights ago that in, in... Do we think dreams are boring? Is that what we've all agreed? Well, we do, but I think that I think that it's in, in certain contexts is okay. In very few <laughs> contexts. But most of the time when people want to tell me the dreams, I don't care. No, it depends on the person. Totally. <laughs> Two. I, I tried to say two and totally at the same time. Two. Totally. It depends on the person. Toe. It was bad. Toe. I, I'll give you that. This dream isn't that worth it. I'll make it really fast. Yeah, let's go for it. Uh, my mom and I, my mom and my grandma and I were having a seance and my grandma left her body and entered the spirit world of the dead and she didn't come back for a long time. So my mom was like, I don't know where Nana is. And I was like, I'm going to go after her. Like if she can do it, I can do it. Whoa. Like I like. I have her blood in me. So I was like, all right. So I meditated and I like left my body and went into the spirit world and it was just blackness. And I was like, Nana. And I just heard my voice echo. And I was like, 
fuck this. I'm out. So scary. It was terrifying. And then I was like, I'm out. And I tried to get out. And then I literally woke up in real life. Whoa. And it was like just covered in sweat. And it was like three in the morning. You ever had terrified. Uh, <clears throat> sleep paralysis? Fuck yeah. But <laughs> different kind. Not the kind. I had one time. And I don't know if this the is. The kind where you're falling asleep and then you can't move. Like you feel an ominous Dude, presence. I had only one time in my life where we were, I was sleeping back where we grew up. This was like five years ago or something. I'm laying on the bed. I had the door not completely shut, shut and I'd hung a sweatshirt, like a hoodie, a hoodie sweatshirt on the door. Mm-hmm. And I remember like, like kind of early, like in falling asleep, waking, like my eyes were open and that hooded thing looked like a person. Yeah. And I remember being like, oh fuck, what the fuck, who is, th-? and not being, like eyes open, I wasn't dreaming, my eyes were fucking open, and I could not move my body, yeah. and it scared me so bad, I've never oh, had yeah. it since, but I've heard stories similar of like, I, that was my definition, at least of sleep paralysis, or my experience of That's like, the classic sleep Your paralysis. eyes are open, but you literally can't move, and it scared me so fucking bad, and I'm But, you, like, they say you're dreaming, your eyes aren't actually open. I mean, whoever they are, <laughs> They're probably more right, but in my experience, it was like it wasn't like I was envisioning. It was I clear, also like crystal I don't, clear. I don't get dreams of like being in my house and seeing the details of like you know a lot of my I, I don't know about it's you like guys. Foggy. I'm always somewhere way different. Wait, than dude, like reality. I've definitely been in my Wales house. Several really? Years. Yeah, yeah. Hannah my, get Hannah. My girlfriend Hannah gets like such realistic dreams. It's insane. Who? Hannah. Who? That? My girlfriend. He just said. No, that I know. Girl. I know. I'm kidding. Because he said my girlfriend, but then I realized he was saying it for the podcast. Right. Yeah. We know yeah. she's your girlfriend. You weren't saying I it for know. Us. I did it for the people. I know. I'm he not- could also say my girlfriend Hannah, it, just us, and it would be fine. No, that'd be weird. I feel like we've done enough for me. If we weren't doing a podcast and he said my girlfriend Hannah, I don't think it'd be that weird. I wouldn't say that's that. like no. He wouldn't say that. It'd be no. weird. Yeah, it would be weird. It'd be weird. It's well, like not weird. But I, I have. Maybe right. I think this is a Hispanic thing. Uh, I can say that because I'm Hispanic, but. Like, I have a lot of Mexican friends, and the siblings say to each other, my mom, my dad, to each other. But it's like, it's all your, the same yeah, it's mom like, and dad. And then so, like, literally one time I asked them, I was like, dude, oh, do you guys have curve, separate, yeah. separate yeah, dads? Yeah, exactly. They're on, they're on <laughs> they're United on Consciousness, consciousness already. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. My mom, my dad. And they're like, no, no, same mom, same dad. And I was like, why do you say my mom, my dad? Because it still is. Imagine your friend, person X says to your friend person Y. We don't have to imagine this. I'm sitting right next to him. If I went my mom to Taylor, that's he'd be weird. Like, that's weird. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah. our it's mom. Yeah, but I've met multiple siblings who do that. That's pretty fucking nuts. I like it. It's weird. You know, there's also like a movie. I it's don't possessive. The name of the movie. Is what it is. Which one? But there's there's a movie where uh, I think it's with Jessica Alba, I want to say. And oh my god, I know exactly what you're talking surgery, about. Dude. Oh my god. Oh no, no, fuck that. Dude, fuck that so much. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me tell you about my sleep paralysis. Because <sighs> it's like that. Okay. My sleep paralysis. Oh, I can see the trailer. Sorry. Is I wake oh, god. up. Oh no, no. My uh I can hear and I can feel what's happening around me. But my I can't open my eyes and I can't move my body. Dude, that's horrible. That's like, weird. Oh it's god. terrifying. That's and crazy. so what I have to do is just relax and then eventually like I fully wake up. But I used to fight it and go, what the fuck is going on? That's so but scary. I can't I can't tell if what I'm hearing is real. I mean, what are you hearing? Like I think my brain's making it up. It's just like ambient, like people awake or like shuffling or like something so it's outside. Not real. No, it might be. I don't know. Mm. But you're, it, not, you're not like waking up and you hear your air conditioning is on? Yes, things like that. Oh wow. How often? This happened like probably a dozen or so times in my life. Oh. But my mom said she did it one time. She was asleep in bed with her boyfriend, and she all she could do was control her breathing. So she started hyperventilating, and he woke her up. Whoa! Because she wanted to like somebody wake me up. So she was like <sighs> trying to like signal, and he did it. So I was like, oh, maybe it's real. I don't know. Or maybe she just did it, and then mm. it did it. I don't know. I can't stop thinking about the movie. We need to move on. Yeah, that movie's horrifying. Yeah, I don't like it at all. I, mean, I, I really don't like that. That doesn't do happen. Think about it. What's the one you're supposed to? You're not supposed to wake someone up if they're is sleepwalking. It yeah. Sleepwalking. Sleepwalking. Because I get violent. Up? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know why people get violent. Do you have horny dreams? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're supposed to talk about that. We're talking about that. Horniness. Your horniness versus my horniness. Yeah. Well, versus your horniness. We can, we can finish this transition with specifically talking yeah, yeah, about yeah. dreams for uh, a second. Who do I have horny dreams? Yeah. Yeah, I had one recently. When was your first wet dream? Never had one. Never had one. What? Yep. Yeah. 
Wow. I know. I've met a lot of people recently and, and had the same conversation and said that they have never had a wet dream. Dude, it's I've upsetting. Four. I want to have them. And people tell me they're so Why good. Why do you want to have them? What? Why not? You get to come. Yeah, but you don't even know you're coming. Some people say they you do. You just get to deal with all the worst parts. It's just, just being clean sticky. Up. It's just clean up. Yeah. No, dude, no, no. Some people have told me that they have sex dream dreams. The dream I ever had, it was having sex with Britney Spears, dude. I'll never forget <laughs> dude, the dream. That makes so much sense because <laughs> those are the dreams I had back then, too. And I was at a, like A2 like development national team when I was like 17 years old. And I was sleeping in a twin bed right next to another teammate. And I remember, like in the dr- in the dream, I'm like on the top floor. I see Brittany. We end up talking. We go to this bed, and the bed is like I imagine, like you know those hotels where there's like four sides, and they all kind of look out, and then there's that giant space. This is a terrible description. I have no idea what you're talking. about. I know about. what you're talking about. <sighs> I can't do it other what? than just using my okay. Hands. Use your hands. Okay, so it's a hotel that has like a giant courtyard. But the the rooms yeah, are like one about. side, then the other yeah, side, yeah, yeah, yeah. then the other side. There's the like balconies side. around it. On the, yeah. you all, can they look up look and you see other. all right, the look rooms. At each other. Right, like yes, but yeah. in some for some reason in the dream there was like a bed like they, like floating almost. Like oh, I, was, I don't remember hot. how we yeah, got to why it. Why is that hot? But then I, I, watch. I remember oh. like I remember like making out with her and like at that time, dude. Do you remember Scott? Do you have a neighbor named Scott or a friend named Scott growing up? Yeah, Scott Scott Wagner. Wagner. I remember Scott Wagner. Yeah, he was. That was the first time I saw the toxic. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, I think that's when I fell in love with her. That's the, the toxic saw- music video. Yes, bro. Oh my uh, god! And it was like toxic oh. music video, Britney. Dude. Oh, dude, I think that was my peak, like jacking off, like when I discovered. No, you were in middle school. Uh, no, I was in high school. What? Yeah, I was in high school, but that's like no, that ha- doesn't make sense. That's not when that came out. No, it's not. It doesn't when have to that be when it came out. Oh, but you're just watching he, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah, he yeah, became yeah. very. Yeah. That's just Aroused like the version, like that's how I remember it in my dream is like that version of Britney Spears, yeah, yeah, just to yeah, put like yeah, a timestamp on like the version so of Britney Spears that I had video. sex with. Oh my God. Yeah. And I remember oh, like us okay, just yeah, about yeah. to have sex and I was, I came like as it was happening. Totally. And then I remember waking up, waking up coming and like he's looking wake at, wake up coming. He's looking at me and I'm album, like, man. I wake up, he's no. asleep and we're facing each other and we're oh. like four feet or three, four feet from each other. Totally. And I'm just like, that's a big face, bed. Four feet? No, no, no. It's a twin. He slept on a separate twin. Oh, got it. Got it. Got it. But I remember like waking up, coming, and being like, "Oh my!" Like so ashamed. Yeah, you know? totally. Oh, so ashamed. Yeah, it was. You so should enjoy ashamed. it. I, I, yeah. Looking back on it, would have been nice to enjoy and be like, "Oh my god, I just came in Britney Spears." You know. Mm. But can I tell you too. mine now? The first time I thought I had sex in a dream was, um, I was in. I was there was this girl with me on a beach. And she had a two-piece bathing suit on, and I was in the bottom piece with her, oh, yes. facing each other. And those, I woke up, and I was like, I had sex. Is it one of those tie ones? or, or like, like ties on the side? Yeah, ties on the side? doesn't even matter. Well, it does. It, it was tight. Matters. Be more reasonable for you I mean, to fit inside. We were like, it was just, we were just pressed up against each other Big in time. her. We were sharing it. I would come from that now. <laughs> Dude, it That's was so, so hot. Good. Oh uh, and I thought, I thought that was sex. And That's then I had incredible. another one where I was sitting up against a tree at the base of it. And Mila Kunis had her legs wrapped around me. Oh my god! Yeah, big time. So those that's are my a, two youngest good ones one. that I remember. Uh, but no, this is less dreams. like that. It was just more just what I used to think sex was. Mm-hmm. But it was like you, like when you're ready to have kids, you have all the girls you have ever met are in <laughs> the bathroom in a line, like porta potties, and you just kind of walk up to one, <laughs> and you go, yeah, <laughs> and then something comes out, you pee in her, I guess. Uh-huh. You go the next one, you go like that, and you just get as many girls as you want pregnant in a row. Really? <laughs> That's what you I, just have a bunch of kids? Yeah. It just would make Dude, you sense. talk about, like, I swear I've heard you talk about, like, shame around sex, and you think it's because of the, like, Christian morals we were raised under. Yeah. I never put that together, nor do I, I think it's true for me, but, like, I was really interested to know why you thought that or, like, how that was relevant for your sexual experiences. Well, it's like, I mean, it, I don't ever think you were as Christian as I was. That's true. You were baptized. I was never baptized. I know. You also played in the worship band. Yeah, I was like doing the thing for a little bit. So yeah. it was like the struggle was we we are very Christian. I'm very involved on church stuff on the weekends, but I go to public school with you. Mm-hmm. We're all talking about Fucking. Mm-hmm. all the time. Were we? 
<laughs> all the time. All the time. I don't, in middle school? Yeah. For sure we were. In middle school, high school, we were fucking talking about fucking all the time. In middle school? Dude, for sure. I just remember the first time I ever heard the word dumb. Oh, God. Yeah, big was time. I ran into you and Augie at the mall mm -hmm. at Oak Ridge by the theaters. <laughs> oh, yeah. This was like early high school, obviously, because right. otherwise we didn't know him. And you guys just kept talking about Britney bleep. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And you kept saying, yeah, yeah like, I, I, I want, I want her about. to, I want her to give me dome. So bad. But it's, <laughs> and then, and then he <laughs> said it and he's like, yeah, I want to get some dome. And you were like, yeah, she's going to give me, I want her to give me dome. <laughs> and you guys just kept saying dome. Yeah, and totally. I was like, I never heard that. <laughs> it's like, dome's good. I like that. It is but you guys really had obviously just discovered it as well. Yeah. And that's why we were using it so much. So much. And you were so both dope. just kind of like giggling. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. I cut you off. Yeah. Shame. Oh, I don't Yeah. I mean. And and I st maybe still feel it in a way now sometimes too, but it's like if my uh, if my like life Christian goal when it existed was to save myself for marriage. Every time I I guess not every time, but like at least very definitely the first time I had sex, like for sure killed that. So it's like oh cool, like I'm like not pure. You're not eligible anymore. Yeah, exactly. I don't get the tenth stamp on my free. Did you feel bad pie. after you actually felt that? losing your virginity? Yeah, but my virginity. No, 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 no. Did yeah, you feel bad for the way it happened? Did yeah. you feel bad that you did it? Yeah, you did. Yeah, for That's sure. A bummer. Not in the, not in, maybe not in the moment, but like maybe a couple days after. And you're like, fuck. I well, and that. also just like, I, I, I bet I did because I don't think I slept over at her house after that. I think I went home. Mm. So I think I drove home. You know, got into my. I was 18 or 19. Pretty sure I was maybe did 19. You, did you have like a wow? Well, what do we call it? I, I think Condom? there's a phrase for it. No. <laughs> I would forget what they're called 100%. if I wasn't talking shit about them so much. Totally. Um, uh, no, no, no. It's like when you do something really horny and good with a girl that you wanted to do it with, and then you like go home or she leaves, and then you have another one to yourself about it. A check off? Yeah, it's like a leftovers or whatever. After you've already done? Yeah, like the same day, same night. Like you go home and you're like, oh, that was sick. It was so hot. I'm going to do it. I'm going to jack off now. No. I've really? Never done that, have no. you ever done that? Jacked off after? Having yeah, yeah. Like you had like a pivotal. Like, the last like this was a big deal. Like I couldn't. <laughs> not like hours later. Yeah. Like after they leave, and you're like, "That was hot. I want to think about it and jack off now." No, but I think you're built differently. Yes, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Time. Because famously, yes, not famously, but amongst us, I've gone to jack off in the bathroom at work. Yeah, because we're well, not going to talk about where I worked. No, definitely not. Because. I don't want to get sued. Is that is that breaking some kind of law? No. In fact, you were you couldn't even get in trouble because it was not in the business technically. You were you would go upstairs to like the secret bathroom. Yeah. It Dude. just seems it seems perverted, but I feel like it's not. It's no. like I just was really horny. I was distracted. We were constantly just like inundated with hot the hottest barely dressed girls yeah yeah, yeah. and so time. i was just like dude i'm so horny i get like i don't I, yeah, yeah shit. Dude, what do you, mean? you were just about to say it don't say so it what? i said don't say it just in case we're gonna say it all right it looked like you were doing it on purpose too <laughs> dude no I, <laughs> this is that shit like that it. he does he likes yeah. to test it dude of course. he likes to test tried to keep things. my mouth closed this yeah. entire time that's so weird because you were in the middle of talking so that's crazy how that was yes and People hear that story and they're like, oh my God, really? But to me, it's not that crazy. Dude, I jacked off ninth grade in earth science class in the back of the class. What? Dude, I'll never forget Wait, this. That's this crazy. is crazy. This is huge. This that's is crazy. Taylor, dude, how do I'll, we not know this? Because my friend, I had a friend named Luis and he was like, dude, have you ever jacked off in class? And I was like, <laughs> I, was like I was like, no. He's like, you got to fucking do it. And it's crazy to where, look back where on. Where is this guy now? And just be like, oh wait, you have was a, a part lot of, of crazy things, though. There was yeah. a there was a part I of like me that, that was like yeah, that's true. that yeah. was like, yeah, why haven't I tried that? Like, <laughs> totally. it's crazy to think. Like, I don't know exactly what I was thinking back then because it was so long ago, my freshman year in high school. But there was a part of me that was like, yeah, I should try that. Yeah, and yeah. I remember it's. Was like, there another part of you that instantly came up with a dozen reasons why obviously you shouldn't? I seriously don't remember what the fuck I could have possibly been thinking. Like looking at it now, it's like, why would I ever have? Yeah, yeah. But maybe I just wanted. I don't know. I don't know, dude. I, I got like I a dry it. handy that I didn't come from in class in high school. 
Dude, under a hat. But black, sorry, go ahead. You remember those like earth science like tables? Yeah, 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 yeah. Black, yeah, the like, wooden, hard. but then the black top. Yes, yeah. And I was sitting in the back, and we were watching like a, a movie or something like near the end of class. And I remember I was wearing sweats, and I just gave myself an over the pants hand job. Yeah, totally. Until I fucking came in my pants. <laughs> he just dude. said he gave himself yeah, an, an over, over the, the pants, pants hand job. job. Straight up, that dude. makes it sound yeah. way cooler. It does. That's what happened. Just that soft. No, rub but it wasn't. You didn't give Actually, yourself a hand job. You know job. what? Yeah, I've what I've done that? a version of this, but not to coming before. Because I used to uh, wear like shorts that had pockets in them, and I'd kind of like arrange my penis to the side, and I'd kind of <laughs> go put my hand in my pocket and go under it, and like just tickle just, the yeah, bottom yeah, of it. Yeah, I think we've all like, done that. Like get close a yeah. little bit, uh-huh. especially like sitting next to like girls in school that I would like think about hooking up with all the time. I'd be like, I can just look at you. You're right there, dude. Oh, honestly, that's so crazy. The that's show. so like not okay. No, at all. Now no. at this age, it's not okay. No, for then not. it's just like. You need to learn some things. Yeah. Oh, you're right. We should say yeah, big time. I feel like the show. But like we're not. We don't. We don't do that now. I don't obviously. think about. Dude, I don't the, think about girls that I went to high school with now and picture them still in high school. No, 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 no. That. That's not even what I was saying. Yeah. I don't think anyone thought you were saying that. Okay. Well, just in case they did. I was talking about it's not okay to look at a girl and jack off without her consent, like in public, which is what you were kind of doing. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I, you yeah. were a kid. No, I was a kid. It was like I feel we like know big, big, the show Big Mouth does such a fantastic job of yeah. like representing yeah. what goes on in your mind at that age. Totally. You like, have no amount, idea unless people tell you the amount of just like random class boners I would get yeah, and totally. get like so fucking oh, scared that mine teacher was going to call on me right. and I'd have to stand like in in English class or something. You right. know, like I'll never forget like having a full on boner and being like. I hope she doesn't call because if you got called on, you had to stand yeah, up and yeah. read. Yeah, and yeah. I was so fucking nervous, dude. Like, okay, oh yeah, your God. mind knows that. Imagine it, this: it, it, it elongates the length. Thank of God the for boner. that twelve o'clock. Time, Imagine dude. the kid who's so cool because he knows he can't get in trouble, and he has a boner, or maybe he doesn't. Has a boner, it makes it cooler for some reason to me. And the teacher calls on him, is like, "Okay, your turn, stand up and whatever." And he's like, "I can't because I have a boner." It's really sick. Do you think that like if he just was cool, was already a cool kid, and right. then just like owned it, that everybody else would follow suit and be like, "Haha, that's so funny, he's so cool." Dude, I was literally just thinking about. Uh, or do you think they'd be like you? Like if I could, if I could go back to high school right now as myself mentally, mm-hmm. yeah, I would just be like, own everything, one hundred percent, everything. I actually can't stand up because I have a boner. Yeah, <laughs> right now, and I don't want everyone to see it. Or maybe you stand up and you read with the boner and. Everyone's like, what the fuck? And starts exactly. laughing. You're like, what's the big deal? Uh, yeah, it's like, just my boner. You, like, well, or I say I have a boner. I don't want to stand up. And she says, I don't care. You have to read anyways. Would like, that happen? Okay. Or you stand yeah. up, read in front of the class. This is the future, dude. You stand up, you read in front of the class. You have a boner. And no one even acknowledges that you have a boner. Oh, it's such a power it's move. it's just like oh not God. a big deal to everyone. That's crazy. That's or like the weak knocks your so blown around, away you know? that you did it, that they're just like, oh my God, that's like the coolest thing I've ever seen. And what if you like shift and then and knock your gatorade off your desk with it with the boner yeah i mean then it would be on the ground but does that add anything to it not the, really oh, okay <laughs> it's just a part of the story i'm just spitballing I'm don't like, paint you, the you wall pick it back when you go you, you smack you go don't do that <laughs> and you keep reading it's really good i love that dude i uh no this is too i Okay, you know, like the, you know the phrase, like I want to come all over you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? No, <laughs> that Can we do this? Question yeah, itself <laughs> is insane. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Wait, can you just say that, like, in a session? Yeah, or like hanging out with a girl that you just met. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you know the phrase? <laughs> I want to like come all over you. Like, who doesn't know that phrase? <laughs> I think you'd be surprised. <laughs> no, <laughs> Maybe. Dude. We don't know. That's it's less about how question. I said it and more just the actual question. Right, the well, question we'll, is we'll, hilarious. Okay, so you know, like, yes, sir, yeah. when you, like, like the, the, like, animal instinct to just, like, want to just, like, come all over something? Yeah. I remember seeing a video... Uh, and I've, I think I've tried to find it since then. Mm-hmm. But it was a, remember when we used to download porn on LimeWire? Yeah, I like found a porn of this like these gr- these n- naked girls in this room, and then a giant penis bursts through the wall, and it must be filled with like hoses or something, uh-huh. and it just starts like foaming cum all over these girls. I love that. I know. 
That's sick. <laughs> and I was like, when I think of like when I get so horny and I'm having yeah, sex, and I'm that's like, that's what you want. To I want to come all over you. It's like I wish my penis was as big as a house. And it was. <laughs> yeah. into this world what is our deal right now? And it was just unloading. Why like, do we like buckets that? and buckets of? <laughs> Doesn't that seem? That's crazy because so I don't feel that way at all. I've yeah. never, no? No, no, I've never had the urge of like, oh my god, I want to, I want to cover you and all. come. Yeah, no. wow, that's like, crazy. Even, difference between even you like two. coming that's crazy. on Sex like is a partner nuanced, or huh? someone else's face to me was always like, that's. Te- I don't want. I've I guess never I done have that. A, I have a problem with thinking that they're not gonna like it. Right. You know, and just I've, being like, I don't want to do. Oh, do we talk like about this? That. Did we talk about this in the last podcast? Mm, I hope not. I honestly. think you challenged. <laughs> oh yeah, it seems like no. Maybe this was just a private conversation because I said I've almost never. Oh yeah, I think it was us. I said I've almost never met a girl who didn't like swallowing cum or being cummed on. And you were like, "Are you sure they were telling the truth?" And I was like, "Yeah, of course." Do you remember this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, but you, I don't know. I feel like you hinted that like like most girls don't mind it or like it. Yeah. Yeah, and I just I've never I couldn't imagine. Like trying to like put myself in the shoes of a woman. Like I couldn't imagine loving that part. I could. Yeah. It's very easy for me. Because sometimes I, I've gotten to the point. I've been so horny where I've been watching those uh, jack off encouragement videos. Jo- Joy. Jack off yeah, instruction. Yeah. Instruct. Whatever. Right. Joe or Joy. Joy. <laughs> Either one is good. Big time. Uh, and they'll be like, and you're gonna eat your cum for me. Like, but like, I'm. They've already like suckered me in. I'm already yeah, in, and then time. out of nowhere, like three minutes in, they're like, you're gonna eat your cum, and I'm totally. like, okay, <laughs> all right, yes. I'm in. Like, you got me to this point. Fuck. I'm in. That's okay. hot. Yeah, yeah. You, big time. Somehow you got me to want to do it. Absolutely. Damn, and I'm the whole time, right up until the point that I come, I'm like, I'm gonna fucking come in my mouth. I can't wait. <laughs> like, I've gone from like, what are you talking about, to like, I cannot wait. Can we get this cum in my mouth any faster? And no, then as soon not. as I come, I'm like, there's no way. No, there's literally no way. As soon as I start coming, I'm like, I'm not going to come out. Yeah, it's like, it's just, <laughs> there's literally no way. Yeah. Like, it's the way. How, absolutely quickly, not. how quickly do you think from the cum leaving your penis to it being in your mouth, you would be like, this was a mistake? <laughs> no. I want to know think, if the woman. Does honestly, like, thank God I've already been like, before I even come, right before, yeah. I'm like, no. Yeah. And Otherwise, I would have that experience. That's why I think but for that's most why women, I it's a lie, dude, is because they probably feel the same way with like, yeah, Michael fucking come all over me. Come. In my mouth, and then the second it actually happens, no, because I don't think and, women have the same uh, well, of course, post not clarity of, as most men, of course, not. But I think they're built I in a think, I think better way more often than not. It's a lie. I, I think that's your experience. Really not, do, lie, sometimes I really do, though. Sometimes I really do like, dude, it. No, I've literally sometimes yeah. I think more often I would say that it's a more lie. Often than not, it's a lie. Is it it's do some true. people, of course, dude? Everyone I think, likes but everything. I think you guys probably attract those kinds of women for the most part. Because that's what you think. Hot women? What? What? Those what? kinds of women who don't like it. But I am a different kind of sexual being this is true. than you guys. And so I think I attract the women who are more like me sexually. Mm. Who want to eat their cum. Yeah, because like I, I've eaten women. As bad as you do. <laughs> I've eaten women's cum. And I don't regret it after. Okay. <laughs> So I'm saying, doesn't that evidence to the contrary that, that it is possible, that they're not lying? I don't think the question has ever been, is it possible? Do some people like it? You think a lot of the ones I'm encountering are lying? No. I've had girls actually be annoyed at me that I didn't give them my comment. I think it's way. just the way you presented it was like the majority of girls like this. And I don't think that that's the I case. I actually kind of think, oh, okay, well, just in my experience. I think majority of yeah, girls which, that I've yeah, encountered dude, with this, what you're saying. When this clip eventually makes it on Instagram, dude, let's do a poll. Oh, please comment. Wow. Yeah. Please, please in the comments. Yeah, comment if you like us to come on your face. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Comment what you like. Comment if you would if you sincerely like the person that you're with. That you're in love with yes. and having sexual relations and are giving Dude, permission so to come different. on you. That's also different. How is that different? Because I, I was in my mind talking about just like asking, doing a survey, and it's not just oh yeah with my partner, right? Because that's different when you build that type of relationship. I'm talking about just like a picking a girl, yeah, a stranger. What yeah. is your preference? Oh, I'm a stranger. Well, I don't even have sex with strangers. Oh my god, I'm talking about the survey, dude. 
I mean, like in the point was in general. What do yes. you think most? The population Why is so of people. Fucking confused. No, no. <laughs> I'm talking about anyone. Comment. We're talking about anyone who is in a relationship with someone. I don't think it has to be okay. In a not in a relationship. Let's say it's just someone that you're, really, that you're really attracted to that you're having sex with, and you trust their jizz. Let's say right. you're single, wow, and we someone said jizz asks one time. you. No. You know. That's more of what I think of is like, let's just assume you're not in a relationship and I just go, hey, what's your sexual no, no. preference? Well, all we're saying is granted that you trust their jizz to be STD free and you're attracted to them. Do you like to swallow or do, have do, come on? Do you? You, can, why can't the question just be, do you like getting cummed on your face? Well, because there's nuance. Simplicity wins, dude. I do. I kind feel of like agree. simplicity definitely wins here. Do you like... Getting like when you're with someone, no, do you too like the general to because the answer could change? Well, let them add their own. Well, I like this, but only when this things. And I'm in full of their, shit. I, I, think, I think just in my mind, I'm like, I could imagine someone who's with a part, like in a relation, has built a relationship being like, yeah, I if that's what I would love, I love that. But just like the like taking all of the emotions aside of it, I just can't imagine. Well, but that's no. weird. I don't even want to have sex with a stranger. Who I don't trust or don't know. We're not know talking at all. about you. Dude, this is in actually We're talking insane. about no, but I am people. the no, but I am the. What I'm saying is I am the example of the most willing to do like sexual one stuff the more, at this yeah, table. So totally. if I'm not even willing, and I'm the one who's arguing the point that most people are willing, right? Then that's not even up for discussion. So you're wrong. No, I'm so confused now. Let's just move on to something oh, yeah, else. I completely agree. Dude, that was insane. <laughs> what was insane about it? Just your inability to put like what we were talking about together <laughs> to make <laughs> and like, like a concise. <laughs> yes, absolutely that. But yeah, whatever. All right. Um, I mean, where do we go from here? Well, I did start talking. I filmed an episode by myself yesterday talking about a lot of this stuff that I'm probably not going to put out. And so there's just some things I want to say. That's fair. Um, do you guys see your wiener getting in the way at all of being monogamous forever? Yeah. Like, I'm not saying causing you to cheat, just like making it difficult at some points. Yeah. Of course. I know that you're currently in a relationship, so it's like. Mm. But I also don't think so. <clears throat> okay. So you disagree with him. I mean, for yourself, you don't have the same. Dude, honestly, I just feel like I've. I've become uh, less like street horny <laughs> over the years. Oh, I like that street horny. Like, That's I'm good. just let. I see. And I, I also just happen to think that the person I'm in a relationship right now with right now is very hot. Yeah. And I just feel, and I also like not to sound like an asshole, but like have had sex with like women that I think would be very, very fucking attractive. And I just feel like I've had enough of you those. Think they would be. I mean, they are. They were. I did. There's no. I'm not too humble. Sorry. I'm sorry. Humble. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm well, no, just say that they're. They are attractive to you. They're super hot. Yeah. yeah, just like generally, I think they're very beautiful women. Women who could be really attractive. <laughs> <laughs> who would be really attractive who would if... Be if really attractive. Yeah, they were exactly. attractive. Dude. Sorry. No, no, I get it. And my, I guess my point is like, as I've gotten older, it's just like, it just doesn't... I, dude, I was having this conversation with Samurai actually yesterday. He's a tattoo artist, my tattoo artist. And the same idea of just like, now I have to be so emotionally, like I'd have to really know someone to be so turned on. So just seeing like a hot girl walk down the street, it's not that like the reptilian part of my brain doesn't go like, damn, you know, yeah. but like that's as far, I just don't get like, oh my God, you're making me want to fuck right now. Like I just don't get that as often yeah, as I did. That's like, happened to me in the last like week. Mm. I'm st I've been, I've noticed some kind of shift in the last week where I'm like less, I don't know. Uh, street horny, like just uh, susceptible to being like turned on out of nowhere. Right. Because that that's the problem. That's the thing. And I want, I want you to explain your answer. The thing that frustrates me is I don't like it just getting in the way. I'm just going about my day right. and all of a sudden I just see like an amazing butt, you know, or like beautiful woman or like whatever. And then just my whole physiology is hijacked. Totally. And I'm just like, I was doing other things and now I want to jack off. Right. I don't like that. You go, I want you that go straight to go, from that to I want to go jack off? No. You don't just like it's have not like a every moment, girl. she leaves, and then that moment's just gone? No, it's lingered before. Now it's getting more reasonable. But I definitely have a disproportionate response that's annoying. Hmm. You're also very sexually driven. Yeah, and aesthetically driven too. But also emotionally driven. Anyway, you go. What did I say? I, I said, said, do you see your little penis getting yeah. in the way 
of monogamy or not getting in the way, but like just making no, it more difficult. I think, ever. yeah, I think if, of course it makes it more difficult, but I think that I'm not like a, I'm, I'm not like a cheater guy. No, 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 not cheating. I me neither. Do that, but I, I definitely, yeah, I always see something and then go, I want to in that. Yeah, for sure. But I think it's pretty much just that. And I can print, I can go jack off and it'll go away. Like almost yeah, immediately. Same. Plus like I've, I've like pursued that enough to know like what getting to that actually looks like. It's not that fulfilling. No, it's like it's immediately unfulfilling. Well, yeah, and and then also just like like uh, so we have the same answer. Yeah. Okay. No, way. but like, but it can like thinking about like I think Summer Ray is so hot. Who's that? The porn star? The no 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 the like influencer chick. Mm. I've, if I show her, you'd be like whatever. But like I'm just like obsessed for some mm-hmm. reason i think she's so hot i think that if i actually was having sex with summer Rae and it was just one time mm-hmm. it would be so weird and like it would like we wouldn't be able to fig- figure each other out that first time like it's ne- sex is never as good as having sex with someone for like the the 25th time Sex with someone. I've had some the first, first encounters th- that were really lucky and good. I feel like I have not. Like we just had the same chemistry. Dude, I definitely have not. Or not the same, not. but the same, like, whatever. But I also agree, there is, like, a there's like a hump. Like, it starts out really exciting and novel, and then it gets kind of boring, and then you learn each other, and then you achieve these, like, other kinds Dude, of sex. Dude, it's pretty dope. Where yeah. it's like, whoa, this is like a drug experience. It's like, yeah, it's it's what it's supposed to be, I feel like. But like the other one feels good sometimes too. But like you don't have a little penis. I literally thought that when you said I that said too, little penis. No, I, I wasn't. Was like I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna uh, correct him. Yeah. No, we all have the same penis. We all do have the same penis. Mm. It's eerie, eerily, and yeah, at least two other of our friends whose yeah. penises we've seen have the same penis are uncannily alike to the three of ours. I agree. So. And yet they all act so differently, you know? Yeah. They have different temperaments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do. Personalities. personalities. We could probably wrap it here. How long has it been? Long time? Do you have anything else you want to say? And this is generally like a mental health podcast, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we just talked about cum for like 25 minutes. <laughs> it's all connected, dude. Everything is everything. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? Mm. We'll just save it for like another episode. I think we should wrap it. It feels like the momentum's kind of dying down. That's fair. That's fair. Do you want to plug anything? Uh, yeah. If you are into fucking volleyball, oh yeah, or, or just want to see you know like a big guy work out with a shirt off sometimes, or they just like you, yeah, or if you just like me for whatever reason, and I just showcase the beautiful, shameless plug. Do you think? Yeah, my Instagram's t april thirteen. My podcast is tallest podcast on earth. We just did an episode together where we also talked about how Gandhi was jizz. So very similar topics. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah that was a really good I'll tag you guys and shit anyway. Unless you don't want me to. No, you can. Okay. Absolutely. You want to plug anything? I definitely want to plug something. <laughs> <laughs> After this conversation? Big time. Come on, do a plug. I want to see you. Do, it seems so unlike you to do a plug that I want you to do a plug. Check me out. What is your things? <laughs> what is your things? It's crazy that I think people are going to think that I'm like a deviant or something because now like people that don't know me, they're just like, we just talked about all that okay. for so long. And then my Instagram name is at hot sex. Oh. It just sounds like I you're really, the least deviant of the three of us. I agree. Absolutely. I yeah. just like will say some wild shit sometimes. You're pretty mild. A good boy. Agreed. Mild good boy. Yeah. Hot sex. H O. Oh, is it actual hot sex now? No, no. It's H O T S E C K S. I'll be promoting my musical project, Ex Boyfriend, E X B F, sometimes too. We're going to play some shows together later this Good, year. I like that. Oh, yeah, we're going on tour. It'll be pretty fun. I guess I could promote that here. Yeah. You don't it have seems to, redundant. Yeah. Who agreed. even got to the end of this? Guaranteed no one. We're going on tour with Gavin Haley and Slim Dan and Ex Boyfriend. Big time. It'll be sick. Uh, did we turn the AC okay. off? Yeah. yeah it it's just hot. progressively got I, yeah, hotter, dude. Yeah, yeah, I know, so for hot. sure it did. Cool, okay, thanks, guys. Bye.